Hey, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the 19th day of March 2024. I hope you're all safe and healthy this Tuesday. I hope that your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are out here trying their best to save lives. Those also who pick up garbage, keep our places clean. And those that make deliveries and transport things like food, water, mail, and people for our convenience. Double blessings upon the men and women out here trying to help, rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also the victims of prostitution and child prostitution. Pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators, the profiteers, and the perverts that create the demand for such heinous industries. Finally, double blessings on the families that are homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, children, and families living in the streets today and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night in San Francisco. The New York Knicks defeated the Golden State Warriors 119 to 112. High scoring affair. We wanted them to stay under 100, but of course, no OG and nobody was going to make that tough because he's out. Now, the Knicks have already said, people, it's amazing how people are ready to jump off bridges and trip at the slightest thing. It's like a wire get tripped, boom, everybody trips out. It was already told us. We know the man just come off elbow surgery. So it's, it's, it, the bone fragments are removed, okay? It's a healing process. He's going to have, have it managed until, for the rest of the season to the playoffs. As we go along, he'll get better. He'll miss some games, and then he'll come back. It is what it is. But we know we will have him for most of this stretch run and for the playoffs, okay? No need for people to always be tripping it every time he winces or every time he grabs just the elbow. So he was out last night. But what surprised me was the starting lineup that Tibbs put out there. And look, it made sense because one of the problems that teams in general have against the Warriors is the Warriors generally play small. They've, they've been doing that during their whole championship run. They played small, and the reason they were able to do that is because the ability of Draymond Green at 6'7 to guard fives, you know, and actually one through five, um, and he had won defensive player of the year a couple of times, that's why um, they were able to go small. And in going small, they're too, much, they're too quick. If they can guard their other teams big, which Draymond could, they're too quick. They got too much speed and shooting. For for any for all the other teams, and then speaking of the shooting, and then defensively, they they really get after it because of their again their speed and quickness. So they they've been playing like that. Steve Kerr has always had a really high level motion offense to get uh, Stephen Curry, who's you know one of the probably one or two greatest shooters in the history of the NBA, get open looks or even semi open looks for him because he can hit them even when there's not a lot of room. That's how they were winning. Then you had Clay Thompson on the other side. So that's always been the way they played basketball. And the last time the Knicks played them, we didn't really match their going small like that. And it hurt the Knicks. And they, and they got out, that is going to stay in New York, got out to a big lead. And the Knicks ended up losing that game. But to last night, Tibbs starts Hartenstein. Then he starts basically four midgets. Okay, Hartenstein, Brunston, McBride, Hart, and DiVincenzo. Now, I understood because it's the matchup worked. I just didn't think he was going to do that. Okay, and of course, as we know, okay, so Brunson, 34 points plus 13, seven assists, five boards. He only had three turnovers, which for him was pretty good in this recent streak. I knew he was going to figure that out, but then Deuce. Deuce plays 47 minutes. He scores 29 points. He's not only doing that. The amazing thing, I expect, I told you, I've been telling you all for a minute. This guy can shoot. This guy can defend on an elite level. But he was guarding Stephen Curry 
for most of that 47 minutes. Stephen Curry. Okay. Now, Stephen Curry, was, I think he's, I don't know if did he, did he score in the fourth. I know he scored, he was held to like five points in the fourth. Uh, but overall, he was eight for 20, four of 13 from three. Deuce was guarding him most of that time. Him and Hart was switching between between um, Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson. Uh, they were playing both of them. And so you, you had Deuce guarding. It's very difficult to put that type of energy into guarding one of the greatest shooters of all time, who is constant motion. There was a guy back in the day named John Havlicek. About 6'5", come out of Ohio State, Hall of Famer, multiple champion with the Boston Celtics. And, and he they put a, he used to do that. He used to be constant motion. It was difficult to guard him because he, they did a, a, a put a, a monitor on him one game. And I think they said he ran like five miles during the game. And he almost never stopped. He was constant motion. And he would get himself open looks. And he would, but in that time, he was getting mid-range, mid, mid-range looks. He wasn't shooting the three like Stephen is. He was getting mid-range looks or he was cutting to the basket and getting layups or caught or creating problems where other teammates would be open. Stephen Curry is like, I haven't seen a guy move like that on that level. There's been a lot of guys that like J.J. Reddick likes to move like that. But on the on level of Havlicek, only Stephen Curry that I've seen that can move like that all game long. And if you give him, and Stephen is even better because you give him a three, he's going to knock it down from 30 feet. Just for a split second opening. And so Deuce guarded him most of the night. Held him to 4 of 13 and 8 of 20 from the field. That's tremendous. He was minus, Stephen Curry's minus 9. At the same time, Deuce hit 6 three-pointers. I was, again, I, I've been telling you all. It was only a matter of him getting con- consistent minutes. For a while now, like at least six his first year even. He, the Knicks would win most of the games that he played at least 15 minutes. Well, last night, this year, he's been playing. And the thing that really surprised me, not just the performance that he put on last night, but after the game, they asked Thibodeau, tell us what was, tell me, what went into the move to start McBride? I thought he was going to say defense and speed. No, he said shooting. He said, we know they doubled up. They were blitzing Brunson. So we need another shooter out there. So everybody, I think not everybody, but most people that are watching the Knicks, Knicks fans understand, even when Tibbs goes offense, defense, he'll go Brunson for the offense and come back and take out Brunson and go McBride for the defense. But he did not mention that. Instead, he mentioned shooting. And again, I've been telling y'all for three years now, this kid could shoot. And then he was doing what he did last night. He was doing in the G League on the regular. Okay. And last night he got the minutes. He put, he only still only took 13 shots. That's all he, he took 13 shots the whole night. So like a guy like Brunson, that is a very efficient, high level score. He took 25 shots last night and he's going, that's what he's going to do. He's going to take 25 shots. And then DiVincenzo only took 13 shots. The thing I like about Dante. He reads the game. Last night, Dante saw Deuce was cooking. He only took 13 shots. He took four. He took eight three-pointers, knocked down four of them. Very efficient game. 18 points. And, of course, Dante was also D'ing up uh, Clay Thompson. He was also D'ing up Wiggins. He was also D'ing up Kaminga. They were really, this, this last night was a huge win in terms of how they won the basketball game. And so um, now the Knicks are still in the fourth seed. They've been in the fourth seed for a minute now, uh, and we're still not 100%. I'm really expecting to see a Mitchell Robinson siding very soon. I, I, I'm look, Every day I'm looking for that. I'm looking for an announcement. You know, he's taking full contact. He's ready to come back. I haven't gotten an update. The last update was, as we all know, March the 7th. You know, he's 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 running and jumping. No, now we know he's running and jumping. He's doing more than that. He's he's playing like three on three. But I want an official announcement that he's he's cleared for contact. Soon after that, he'll play. Okay. It can happen at any time. Now, Julius can they they haven't given you a lot of data on Julius. 
I think really they're saving him for the playoffs. I really, I'm, I'm getting the feeling they're saving him for the playoffs because in terms of the ferocious defense that the Knicks play, Julius is not as important in that. He's important on the rebounding and, of course, offensively, okay? You got the rebounding covered with OG and Precious, and then you're going to get Mitch Rob back, and now you got Hartenstein. The, the rebounding gets covered. But you still need Julius because Julius can draw double teams. People have the game plan for him. So if you could hold him out and make sure that that shoulder is holding up as well as you need it to hold up, give him as much time as he needs, then you bring him back when he's ready. Because, yeah, there's, there is an obvious, there's an obvious um, risk. In the shoulder popping out, the, you know, it, it popping out again. That does happen to people. Um, you know, it, sh it pops out. I've seen it more with non-athletes than athletes or ex-athletes. Shoulder just pops out and has to be popped into place. So they don't want that happening. I don't know what the risk of it is as far as him. I'm not a doctor and they're not saying anything. But I know the longer he can wait and work and rehab that shoulder, the stronger he'll be. So at this point, I kind of thought he'd be back by now, but I understand, especially the way they're playing, and especially when OG is out there with Mitchell Robinson will come back. The defense is going to be ferocious. And as you can see, you know, last night, 119 points. They can score. Okay. They're not they're not missing scoring. And I've been getting a lot of because right. I mean, we didn't have a scoring guard off the bench. No, we don't. We got scoring. Did you see Deuce last night? Did you see that? He can score. He just needs minutes. He got plenty of it last night, and he needs shots. He did. he took thirteen shots. Imagine if he took twenty shots. See, you got Dante can shoot the rock. Deuce can shoot the rock. Brunson can shoot the rock. Then you got the two bums. They can shoot the rock too. You know, once in a while, like last night, Bodega forty four bum. He only scored. He he was a waste of. He was a waste of space last night. I mean, he played seventeen minutes. Two of six from the floor, zero for two from three, and his defense stunk. Then there was Burke's bum. He he shot the ball a little better. He was one of three and one of five. He, and he scored five points. Slow. When 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 Mitch Rob comes back and OG comes back, these two bums are done. It's telling you, okay, when OG and Mitch Rod come back, they might still start hard because Jew is not going to be back yet. So that, that'll that say one of the bums will get some minutes. But these guys, man, the defense, the, the defense looks pristine, and then you get this blemish when they come in the game. But anyway, and some people get like, don't call them bums. No, they bums. They're not trash because they both are experienced pros, and they're pros. But on this team, they bums. They just bodies that need to be filling in positions until we get our troops back. That's it. But um, a chore. The thing about pressure, you look at his stat line. Okay, he had nine boards, five on the offensive end, and of course that's huge because last night um, the Knicks, I, the Knicks out rebounded them forty four thirty nine, and on offensive glass uh, twelve to fourteen, which with Draymond Green. Golden State is a tremendous rebounding team. But so that was good. But if you watched the game, his rotations were a little off last night. Couple times. See, when you're playing a Stephen Curry, what'll happen is they're gonna set a million picks to get him get him open. And most a lot of those 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 curls they run with him and they're sitting like two or three picks to get him. Deuce has got to fight through that. If you can step up and cause Stephen to hesitate a minute. Like one time they did it, they stepped up. I think it was, it was either pressure hunting. They stepped up, and that caused him to hesitate just in the time for Deuce to get back. Homie still hit the shot, but what I'm saying is that's the, the way you got to play. Last night it seemed like, and I half understand. It. I'm not blaming Precious. This is the thing. Um, in terms of NBA speed on the offensive end of the floor, there's very few teams like Golden State Warriors. Which, they're not like they were when they were winning championships, but 
they, they are so fast and quick in terms of off ball movement that it's hard to keep up. I mean, even for experienced NBA players, it's hard to keep up. And that's what happened to the Chua last night. I mean, it caused your head to be on a swivel the way those cats are cutting and moving all constantly. Off the ball, on the ball, weak side, strong side. They running constantly, cutting constantly. So a couple times he got caught, like three or four times, he got caught um, uh, being, a, and all it takes is a split second too slow. That's how fast the league is. A split second too slow, and you got dunk on you. And that's what happened last night. Um, the, 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 the Trace Jackson. He had 19, and a lot of that was just like that. They were off-ball movement. They caught Precious looking one way, and he went the other way, lob, dunk. It happened so fast, man. Or he ran down the court, outran everybody, had get a mismatch on Brunson, lob, dunk. And they do this on a high level. This is Steve Kerr's fingerprint. That's how he hit. That's why they still doing it, even though they're this team is past their prime. But you can see just the way he runs his offense, just the way he has his defense, it, he really is something else. And he learned that, of course, from Popovich. Okay? So even though he played with Phil Jackson, Popovich is the one that really, when he was down there with San Antonio, he learned from Popovich. And then he went to Phoenix as a, a, a like, I don't know if he was a coach, but he was a um, front office guy. And then he came to Golden State. Kerr knows basketball. He's a high-level basketball mind. And you can see by the, the way he has his team run. So, um, Precious was caught, you know, last night in NBA speed level, uh, elite level offensive motion. That's what Golden State was, was, was putting on him. And so he, he got caught a little bit, but he was minus 14 and that's why you could see it. So I'm not blaming him. Maybe let's put it this way. It was a learning experience. <laughs> it was a learning experience for him. Hartenstein was better because Hartenstein is bigger and not only that he I think he's more used to playing the heavy minutes and knowing what what to expect from a Golden State type team and knowing where to be so does Mitch Rob so you won't see them getting caught like that and I don't think you won't see Precious getting caught like that too much more either but it was a learning experience it was frustrating for me to watch because I've seen it happen again and again and again I'm watching him turn his head boom the guy's gone dunk <laughs> and I know he was mad at himself but he'll learn he'll learn um, but it was a great game for the Knicks. Like I said, they did score 112 points. A lot of that came at garbage time. But um, the Knicks was just too much for them, man. The Knicks was just too much for them. Too much Deuce, too much Brunson, too much Hart, too much Hartenstein, just too much. The Knicks, again, are, are how many times, how long has it been since you could legitimately say the New York Knicks are better than the Golden State Warriors. That's been a long time. The New York Knicks are better than the Golden State Warriors. See? Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Don. Say thank you, Tom Thibodeau. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. So.